Hey everybody, welcome to the first of what I hope is many installments of The Doctor Is In, live with TOA. My hope is that you will find this information useful and helpful in living your best life. I'm your host, Gray Stallman. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon with Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance, and I've been in practice for 25 years helping folks with their spine, back, and neck problems. I'm not, however, your orthopedic spine surgeon. The information we're going to discuss today should be considered for informational and educational purposes only. It should not be considered medical advice. And if you're concerned with professionals with Tennessee Orthopedics, um, this is our first attempt, as you, as you can see, of Facebook Live in this approach. Um, so I apologize, it's going to be a little rough, but we'll get through it, we'll make it better. Um, and certainly if you guys uh, have any questions, uh, please chime in and I'll try to get to them. Because our topics are so uh, versatile and varied, uh, complicated, um, uh, many times questions can kind of lead us down a rabbit hole that really is not pertinent to what we're going to talk about. So we'll try to rein in um, questions uh, surrounding the topic we're going to discuss and hopefully it'll be satisfactory to you. So today's topic. Um, this is probably the most common orthopedic problem we deal with. It's certainly the most common spine problem that I deal with. Um, and that's acute low back pain. Uh, statistics suggest that greater than 90% of people will have at least one low back pain episode in their adult life that takes them to the doctor. And in fact, other than the common cold, low back pain is the most common reason why somebody goes to see their doctor. So it's universal. In fact, we consider it essentially a normal phenomenon, basically because everybody has a spine. And fortunately, it usually takes care of itself. It doesn't mean something bad is happening. And it doesn't mean that you're going to be stuck with a chronic back pain problem forever and ever. So let's talk a little bit about acute low back pain and um, see if we can uh, dispel some misinformation that's been out there. Um, so what, let's define acute. Acute just means of recent onset. And so in medical terminology, that's anywhere from a few days duration up to about three months duration, basically short term. Now acute problems can become chronic problems, which are lasting more than three months. But the vast majority of times these back pain episodes are really self-limited. They don't last very long. So what are we gonna talk about today? So the first we're gonna talk about is a little bit of anatomy. We're gonna go over the anatomy of the lower back, kind of show you what we're dealing with and what are some of the causes or at least some of the sources of back pain. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, what you can do uh, if you have a low back pain attack um, to try to help get things better and make you feel better. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about why people develop back pain. And then lastly, we're going to talk a little bit about what people can do to try to minimize the chance of it happening again. Okay, so let's get started. So first is anatomy. We always in medical school, we talk about basic science. We talk about the basic stuff. Anatomy is really the basics. Okay, so I got a model here. Uh, this is a spine, kind of a whole spine here. Uh, ignore the screws, that's for another topic, but uh, uh, basically the spine is a pretty magical piece of your body. Um, it's made up of the vertebrae, which are the bones, these blocks in the front, stacked together with the, the discs, which are the shock absorbing pads that sit between the bones. And then there's a pair of joints in the back, wherever there's a disc, there's two joints. And that stack of bones and discs creates a tube or channel, which is where the spinal cord and the nerves are. So what this structure does is allows us to stand upright. It allows us to move the joints and the discs work on movement. And it also allows us to protect the uh, nerves. And so it's a pretty complicated structure. You can see lots of bits and pieces. Um, there's lots of parts that uh, uh, can be associated with back pain problems and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. In the lower back specifically, there's five bones, there's five discs, 
and there's a pair of j nerves that come out at each side where there's a disc. Um, the joints as well, there's a pair of joints wherever there's a disc as well. Um, so um, that's the basic anatomy of your spine. Um, the nerves that come out, that come out here, that go down into your legs, um, we're not going to talk too much about those today because we're not, uh, acute butt pain is not a uh, pinch nerve problem, so to speak. Certainly people can have nerve pain, which we call sciatica, related to a back pain problem, but that's kind of topic for another day. Let's kind of just talk about back pain that's kind of centralized. Um, so the nerves that go down the legs, uh, they do several things. They give us the ability to feel or sense uh, pressure and sensations. Uh, they run the muscles uh, and they run the uh, reflexes. Like when somebody hits you in the knee with a hammer and your foot goes up, that's a reflex. Um, there are another set of nerves in your body that are kind of working behind the scenes that are probably often involved in acute, uh, developing acute back pain. And those are the nerves that attach to all the structures. So all the discs, all the joints, all the muscles have little tiny nerves that attach to them. And what they do is they act like sensors for your brain. They tell your brain what's going on with your body. Well, if those nerves get irritated, if they get uh, stimulated, if they get sick, um, they can send signals to your brain and your brain just senses something wrong and usually senses it as pain. And so if you've got a moving part like the discs or the joints that move too much or cause stimulation of those little nerves, your brain's going to sense pain and that's many times where this problem kind of comes from. So um, as far as um, why somebody develops back pain, well, frankly, we don't know. It's a, that's a question we can't answer well because there are way too many factors that can be involved in the process of developing back pain and the cascade of things that occur. So in general, most of the time uh, when people have a low back attack, we'll call it that, people sometimes call it, I threw my back out, but basically it's a situation where you have abrupt onset back pain, kind of locks you down, you can't move, it's pretty scary. Um, usually what's happened is not much. Um, sometimes people will overwork it, they'll know, ooh, my back aches a little bit, but many times people just say, I woke up with it, or I just turned wrong, and all of a sudden I couldn't move. Uh, it's like a lightning bolt hit them. Um, probably what's going on is the, the moving parts, the muscles, the discs, the joints, uh, were moved or positioned in a position that was more than they wanted to tolerate, stimulated those little sensory nerves, and sent those signals to your brain, and the brain says, whoa, that hurts, stop doing that, and sends signals back, and all of a sudden your muscles lock up. It's like a big muscle spasm. That's the most common scenario. Um, good news is, is these types of episodes um, typically are not related to trauma, uh, typically are not related to any disease, uh, and most people kind of scratch their heads and rack their brains in trying to figure out what they did. Don't bother. Um, it doesn't really matter what you did because you can't undo what you just did. And many times you'll never figure out the specific cause. So basically we know these episodes can happen. Sometimes they last just a few hours. Sometimes they last a few days. Sometimes they can last a number of weeks. Um, frankly, the majority of times, probably 95% of the time, this episode doesn't mean anything dire or drastic. Um, the, uh, uh, it happens, it's painful, it limits your lifestyle, but the vast majority of people get past this uh, pretty easily, most of the time on their own, okay? So, why, um, sorry, um, how do we deal with this kind of episode, okay? Well, in general terms, years ago, we used to tell people, oh, go to bed for two weeks, stay quiet, don't do anything, and we found that actually that is detrimental. So what we typically tell people to do at this point is take it easy, relax, stop doing the things that irritate it, and just let it rest for a little bit. Typically we tell people at most um, taking it easy, bed rest type of thing for one or two days at most. Heat is usually very helpful to people. 
Um, it loosens the muscles up. It brings blood flow to the tissues, would help, which helps to decrease inflammation um, and often makes you feel better. Usually, if you can tolerate these types of medicines, taking um, an anti-inflammatory medicine like Advil or Aleve over the counter um, with Tylenol in many cases, so acetaminophen, can be very helpful in reducing the pain. And then returning to motion, moving. So you kind of shut down for a short period of time and then you start moving again. Now everybody's different in how much they can move. Everybody's different in what positions are comfortable and what are not. But we found that movement actually helps the body to get over things faster and keep you from getting too stiff, too tight, and getting those muscles weaker with inactivity. So it's important for you to start pushing the envelope a little bit as you start feeling better. Now that doesn't mean zero to 100. It doesn't mean you know running a marathon tomorrow when your back hurts, but starting to test the waters and, and doing simple activities, simple movements to try to keep yourself limber is probably the biggest thing you can do. Um, now, typically these types of episodes may just last a few hours or a few days. Once things settle down, you can go on and go back to your activities uh, as you feel comfortable. If symptoms are lasting longer, you know, a week or 10 days, something like that, uh, we often recommend that you talk to your primary doctor or talk to one of us about uh, some more medications. Sometimes we need a stronger anti-inflammatory medicine than the over-the-counter medicines. Sometimes we need some medicine for muscle relaxation. Occasionally, we'll actually prescribe people pain medicine, and basically what that does is it helps them relax some um, so that things can start recuperating. Um, physical therapy is often something we use um, to try to help get people get past the uh, initial problem. Um, that kind of speaks to the, the advice of starting to move. Sometimes, however, physical therapy is what we need uh, that, that assistance with the physical therapist is what we need to um, really get past the episode. Rarely is an MRI needed, okay? The vast majority of time, these episodes are self-limited. They get better on their own. Um, oftentimes, people will come in and say, Doc, I need an MRI. And I say, whoa, wait a minute, let's, let's save your money. Let's start the simple stuff first, medications, modifications of your activities, and some therapy, and see where we get. And the vast majority of the time when people come back, uh, they're a lot better. So um, uh, the, an MRI, even if it showed something like a ruptured disc or a pinched nerve, uh, uh, wouldn't change how we would approach the initial symptoms. So when would we get an MRI? Well. A couple of things make us more interested or more concerned about getting an MRI. One is if people's symptoms have been related to trauma, you fell down, you had a motor vehicle accident, something like that, that was really traumatic, that could break something. That's where we would consider getting an MRI, especially if x-rays were not very revealing. Um, if people have lots of nerve pain, and nerve pain is also known as sciatica, um, that's pain going down your leg from your back. That's going to be the topic of another talk, so we'll kind of talk about that later. But if that gets worse, progressive, incapacitating, we would be more likely to get an MRI. If people come in and they have notable weakness, they have muscle strength weakness in one of their legs, signs suggesting nerve problems, we would consider getting an MRI. And in those folks who just aren't getting better, um, after a reasonable period of time of, of, of treatment with medicines and therapy and exercise, mm, ballparkish about six weeks, if they're not getting better, we would get an MRI to get a better idea of what their anatomy looks like. So typically we don't get an MRI on the front end. It's not necessary. Um, and uh, uh, we save the MRI for things that we can explain or things that make us real nervous. I think probably the most important um, potential symptom is if somebody loses control of their bowel and their bladder function, um, that makes us very nervous about something going on with regard to nerve pressure. And we would 
be much more aggressive in, in considering getting an MRI there, okay? So we talked about a little bit of anatomy. We talked about why people develop these back pain problems, which is basically you've got a spine, you've got a life, and you move. Things can go awry because it's a complicated structure uh, in this type of setting. Um, so what can we do about trying to help keep it from happening again? Well, we can never completely remove the possibility of it happening again. Again, because it is essentially a normal process of having a spine. But uh, a couple of things that modern lifestyle has led us to have and have an increased problem with back pain are sedentary lifestyle, lack of exercise and flexibility, um, being a little cautious, a little smart, how we bend, lift, and twist, and cigarette smoking are probably the top four contributing factors to recurrent development of back pain, okay? So sedentary lifestyle, why does that have an effect? Well, if, if we do nothing but work in an office, sit, get no exercise, our core, the muscles around our body, particularly our lower back, gets weaker, they, it, we get a little less flexible, and it's easier to tweak your back and send it past where it can tolerate. Uh, so it's important uh, that we are up and moving and staying strong in our core, staying flexible in our lower back and our legs to minimize the chance of, of creating a back pain problem. Um, cigarette smoking, these are in no particular order by the way. Cigarette smoking, the only reason why cigarette smoking has an effect on the back is that the, the chemicals associated with cigarette smoking uh, poison the body tissues. And so we know that people who are smokers have a lot higher incidence of back pain problems than non-smokers. People who are smokers have a lot higher incidence of degeneration of the spine at an earlier age than non-smokers. We don't know information yet about vaping. Um, that's still yet to be determined because at least in part, the, the combustion products of, of a burning cigarette or uh, tobacco is, is part of the poison. But we do know that nicotine is a poison to the body too. So we're still looking for that information. Um, the poor, core, uh, poor flexibility, poor core strength um, speaks a little bit to what I talked about with the uh, uh, sedentary lifestyle. Um, uh, it's important that we stay fit, we stay healthy, we avoid obesity uh, to try to help our body uh, be as good as it can be. Father time is pretty ugly. Nobody's body gets better with time. As a young person, we tend to be flexible, we tend to have good muscle strength, uh, our joints are healthy, but as time goes on, all those parts wear out. And so what we're trying to accomplish with staying fit and staying flexible with exercise and whatnot is to slow down the process of aging in father time. Unfortunately, we're kind of genetically programmed to wear out how we wear out. But if we can m minimize the impact of the wearing out process by uh, essentially shoring up the body beforehand, uh, we can potentially reduce the likelihood of having problems related to the breakdown process. The last thing I wanted to talk about with regard to acute low back pain is what I call BLT, bend, lift, twist. So one of the most common reasons that people say they developed an acute back pain problem is I picked up something, I twisted, and I put it over here. The reason why that is, is notorious for potentially creating an acute episode is it puts the back at a real disadvantage. You're twisting those little joints in the spine. You're twisting the discs. You're twisting the muscles into a cockeyed position. And especially when we lift in front of us and around, that can essentially push those tissues further than they can tolerate and they shut down, they lock down. And so it's really important for people, particularly who do a lot of lifting, to kind of think about it a little bit. So you've always talk, heard people say, lift with your legs. Well, what they mean by that is don't bend over and pick up with your back. 
because that's hard on the muscles and the ligaments and whatnot. It's better to squat down and put the weight close to the center of your body, stand up with your legs, which are the strongest parts of your body, and then essentially pivot to allow you to put the, the weight where you need it to go rather than twisting. That, that combination of motion is really super hard on your back. So that's one little bit of advice. Um, I have uh, online some videos that we put together with regard to some stretching exercises and some strengthening exercises for your low back. Look on our YouTube channel, um, TOA uh, YouTube, and you should be able to find those. You can look up my name, Stallman, S-T-A-H-L-M-A-N, and um, get an idea about uh, what you can do at home to try to help yourself, okay? So, in summary, we're gonna kinda of tie this up. These, these uh, little events are gonna be pretty short snippets of information so that you can digest them and you can get on with your day. Uh, in summary, we've talked about uh, um, how common acute low back pain is, how in the majority of cases, it really is not a long-term big deal. It's not a sign of bad things happening to you in almost every case. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the anatomy and how that impacts why we develop back pain problems. We've talked about lifestyle, flexibility, strength, uh, and uh, core strength, uh, maintenance to try to help minimize uh, uh, a back pain episode. And we've talked about some of those things we can do to treat ourselves so that we don't have to go to the doctor when one of these back pain episodes exists or occurs. Notice I use the word when and not if. Again, essentially everybody has at least one period in their life when their back goes out on them and they're pretty locked up. Um, look around you, everybody's had it at some point and if they haven't, they will. Um, the good news is it doesn't mean bad things are happening and usually it gets better very quickly. Okay, so that's about it. Um, I think at this point, uh, um, I hope this was helpful, this first episode. I know it's a little rough, but uh, we'll work on it. Everybody's learning here. I'm old. This stuff's new to me. Um, uh, I certainly look forward to future episodes. If you guys have any ideas about episodes, we'd love to hear from you. Um, also, if you have any um, questions about this episode, or my videos, you can get a hold of me by email. That's Stallman, G-C, S-T-A-H-L-M-A-N-G-C at T-O-A.com. I also have a personal website, which is www.drstallmanonline, which is D-R-S-T-A-H-L-M-A-N online, O-N-L-I-N-E.com. Um, that has a lot of paper information that I give to my patients about various spine topics. It also um, lets you communicate with me directly. And then also come on to toa.com. Um, TOA is the largest uh, uh, orthopedic musculoskeletal care giver in Middle Tennessee. We've been here forever, since 1927. We have practitioners in multiple locations with um, all specialties covered except for orthopedic tumor. Um, so if you have needs, if you have problems, if you need to uh, uh, get a hold of somebody, we're here for you. Uh, go to toa.com. That's www.toa.com. You can learn about TOA, its history, our locations and services, also about our doctors. You can also make an appointment online. So our next topic, I think, is going to be about herniated discs and sciatica. That's nerve pain coming from pressure on the nerves down the lower back. Hope to see you there. Until then, go out and live your best life.